Here we go. This is it. We're back. Episode 457. Wow. Yes, that is the correct reaction to 457. That's my lucky number. Uh, <laughs> what are the odds? Yeah, I know. That's incredible. I, this is No Laugh Track Podcast. We're here at Acme Comedy Company in Minneapolis. I am Justin Severson who gets to, Severson, who gets to host this every week. First time guest with me this week, Phil Wang, who... Uh, you might have seen him on national television just earlier this week. He was yeah. on Late Night with Seth Not Meyers. two nights ago. Two nights ago mm. on national television with Seth Meyers, and now he is here on the stage in Minneapolis. Yeah. How are you? Good, good, good. Um, um, it's nice to be in Minneapolis. Nice to be in Minnesota. I've never been to the Midwest before. Okay. Um, and it's so nice. It's so calm and peaceful. And people are very um, friendly. I find. I heard this phrase, you're Minnesota nice. Yes. And it means nice, but maybe a bit passive aggressive. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So coming from the UK, I feel right at home <laughs> with that energy. <laughs> I, <laughs> were you told about that before you got here or uh, when you arrived? When I arrived. Yeah. I was told about this. Yeah. Yep. Minnesota nice. Yeah. The first time, I'm sure I, I can imagine how it went. You said, wow, it's amazing how nice people are. And then someone immediately hopped in and said, be aware that it m is, might be just to your face. It's Minnesota nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then, yeah, but I'm happy with that. I'd, I've just come from New York, so I'll take passive aggression over outright aggression uh, any day of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. So you just, you just told me that you haven't been here before. Had yeah. you been to New York before? Yes, I've been to New York before. I I've thought so. I've been to um, little bits of the States before, um, but uh, I never, I've never been out West and I've never been Midwest. So this, uh, I'm on a, on a tour now that's finally taking me uh, westwards across the country. I saw the uh, schedule that you had posted a couple of weeks ago of this tour. It's like one-offs everywhere, but Acme, it's getting a whole week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota for the longest stretch out of all the cities. Um, uh, and uh, it's it's funny because I think it might be the smallest city uh, that I'm performing at. But it's, Interesting. But it's the longest run. But that's how I, this club uh runs so yep. they, they do these week shows uh, weeks of shows here and there's obviously they've got a real culture here and uh, an audience and you know it was it was fun and full ish on a wednesday night last night which is more than you can ask for on a wednesday yeah so they, yeah they're doing something right here are you so for people that don't know you live in london in london uk okay mm -hmm. and when you're performing there what, I know you do some huge shows over there, obviously. But are you, like, is there a normal? Is there a, are there club gigs you do like that over there still? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the the with the touring shows in the UK, you usually instead you go to theaters. Um, so like small regional theaters here and there. Uh, and the clubs, yeah, that you you do weekend at clubs, and so we have the comedy store, the things like the comedy store in London, and the Glee clubs in Birmingham, and and all these sort of things. Um, but but the the cult the the s industry the culture is slightly different here it's real sort of this each city has its club and the touring comics come through the clubs mainly right yep yeah yeah so I'm getting used to that difference in culture must be nicer just to go right into a theater <laughs> oh yeah yeah it can be but it's definitely a different vibe in a the theater people expect more of a theater kind of show sometimes uh, th there's there's an atmosphere in a comedy club that I think is you can't you can't replicate anywhere else i uh we were talking briefly before we started here i was telling you about a part-time job i have working at a stadium last weekend uh john mulaney was in town oh wow doing he, a show there he played the stadium Fourteen thousand tickets were sold wow that's incredible isn't I, it i'd never i've never so i worked and then stuck around and watched a little bit of it and i've I, it's not the right place for comedy yeah. No matter how good somebody is, it's just I, well, cause I you, prefer you this so much more. Yeah, are those, are those sizes of venues, you end up you, you end up just watching the screen, right? Yeah, completely. you end up just watching the comedian on the screen, and it's like yes. it's cool to be in the same. You know, it's nice to have the atmosphere of everyone watching this comedian together, but uh, but for the most part, you so it feels like you might as well be watching them on TV. Yeah, mm, even yeah. the even the laughs sound different, like they just echo differently in in the room. Well, there, I guess there is kind of no echo, right? Well, it I guess so yeah, the, it's, the, it's the negative echo, yeah. Whereas in a club like this, with a low ceiling, it becomes like a pressure cooker. Yeah. And that's that. That's when a, a night really really kicks off. Like, I, I don't think a, a, a comedy show in an arena has ever kicked off. I don't think it's ever, you know, it's really lit off. You I know, agree. I c there's never been, like, an explosion. You can't feel the, that sort of explosive 
kind of cathartic animal uh, release that happens in a, a comedy club with a low ceiling where everyone in the room is, is on board with something and a comedian times something just right or something perfect happens right at the right moment and the whole place just explodes. You can't get that at, at, at an arena, no matter how good the comedian is. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. Although, like, if you think back, I'd like would be kind of fun to, you know, if you could get, get in the time machine and go back and see, like, what would, uh, you know, what would a dice man been like at his prime of his, right. uh, or uh, you know, Eddie Murphy? Like, oh, what would that have been like? I, I'm not sure. But um, so this yeah. is your first time in Minnesota. Are there things that you want to see while you're here? Anything like, oh, uh, I do know about Minnesota. I want to go to the. I want to go to the Mall of America. You do. I do. Just because I, I understand at some point it was the largest mall in the world. I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. And I also do need pants. <laughs> so there's a practical <laughs> element to it. I like to be able to marry practical purposes with my sightseeing, if possible. Uh, and then I, I do want to see this big cherry in a spoon. Oh! Um, I thought I've heard about. I've been told there's a big cherry in a big spoon somewhere in Minneapolis. There is. It's not yeah. far from here at all. Oh, great. Not, not far from here at all. In fact... Uh, <laughs> They they had they had it was recently repainted. Did, had you heard about this? Ooh. And for some reason, is uh, it touched up or is it blue now? Is it a different color? T- a touch up. Okay. Yeah. It's <laughs> they uh, now it's a grape. It's a completely different <laughs> fruit. <laughs> yeah. uh, they uh, for some reason they couldn't find a professional painter to do the job in Minnesota. The th- you'll see it. It's, it's huge. A big job. Yeah. They shipped it to New York. What? To have someone paint it? No, that can't. And be then true. shipped it back here. You're joking. I'm not joking. God, the carbon footprint of that cherry. Can you imagine? <laughs> right? <laughs> wow. Why couldn't they ship the painter? I don't understand. You're f- no kidding. <laughs> Why couldn't they just get get the painter down on a fl- plane? I know. Th- it must be New York must be the only ha- place that has a perfectly sized room. Right. Uh, I just they must have got the Brooklyn Bridge guys because they're, they're used to crawling over something and uh, touching it up, right? <laughs> it must be. Yeah, somebody has some sort of, I don't know. Or was that the Golden Gate Bridge? I can't remember. But yeah. it was very strange to me. Just a little fun little tidbit about that thing since you brought that Great. up. Okay, did, okay. It, did it, it didn't make any sense. So I, I saw some of the show. I saw your set last night. Oh, cool. Thanks. Fantastic. Um, oh, thank you so much. Fantastic. It was a fun show. Um, a few people were asleep. Um, but uh, but like dotted around, and they what they uh, they weren't bored. Wasn't me because the people awake were really into it. But there's some I guess people may, either people in Minneapolis are well, they work really really hard. Thank you. And they turn up at <laughs> uh, these shows tired, uh, or they were on something. I have no idea. But it's one of the two. Um, there one I had to stop the the set at one point because a lady was snoring so loudly I behind know. the pillar. Um, but but it was peculiar because usually. Either everyone's really into it, or if you do have people sleepy, g- falling asleep, it's because the gig's not going well. But the gig was going well, but there are also some people sleeping. Um, but I think that's just America, maybe. Um, I think people... You know what I have noticed is people, uh, American crowds, are much more capable of having distinct experiences within the crowd. Do you know what I mean? So you can have within the same audience someone really loving it, someone falling asleep, someone being fine with it, and everyone has their own experience of the show in isolation from everyone else. Oh, yeah. Oh, de- definitely. In the UK, a, a, a room moves all together one way or the other. Interesting. You, it, it's more of a mass, um, a hive mind, an, a UK audience. The US, it's, 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 the US is a congregation of individuals, whereas in the UK, it's a hive, a hive mentality is created in every room. And you have to get the whole room or you lose them all. In the States, you, can get, you get individuals. Interesting. Adventures. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's to do with the American state of mind. You know, it's all about the freedom of the individual. And uh, and in Europe, it's, all, it's more about, I don't know, the group mentality. I don't know. But that's the real difference I've noticed here. And so it feels completely hmm. n- understandable to me then. I, in w- the same gig, someone could be absolutely l- loving it and laughing. And the person next to them is having a nap. <laughs> that seems thus to me so epitomizes the American uh, comedy crowd. So I think what you're saying is that in England, if one person falls asleep, they all fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, sort of like chickens in a coop. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. If you turn the lights off, they just all fall asleep. <laughs> That's so funny. So explain this to me, uh, Phil. When uh, when you go to Google and you put in Phil Wang, it d- says Phil Wang, British writer. Oh, really? Yes. Huh. Well, I mean, that's not wrong. Right. Yeah. But it, would that be your top title, uh, uh, subtitle, whatever that would be? Would that? I'll take British. 
Um, <laughs> a writer. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I write almost stand up. British. Uh, period. Writer. <laughs> period. Well, full stop, we'd say. But well, uh, but full stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll take I'll take writer. I do write a lot. I suppose technically I write more than I. S- oh no, I do. I guess I say more than I write. If you take in all the repetitions, you only write something once, but you, re- you say it many times. Hmm, maybe British sayer would be more accurate. <laughs> Phil Wayne, <Sayer>. British sayer. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll get in touch with Larry Page. Get him to change that. Yep, British sayer. Fair enough. But I do know that uh, you have written a book. Yes, I wrote a book. Um, it's called Side Splitter. It came out last year. And it's sort of a hesitant memoir because I feel like I, I don't deserve to write a memoir, but also it is full of stories from my life. Sure. But I can imagine that if you tell people it's a memoir at your age, they're like, uh huh. What yeah. are you done living? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you done I, everything already, and Phil? I, really? I, and I join in with them. If whenever a young person writes a memoir, I think, who do you think you are? Yeah. Unless you're Malala, you've got nothing to say, I reckon, until you're 68, yeah. at least. But uh, but I also stand up is just kind of this running memoir anyway, and so writing a book as a stand up is always going to come off a bit memoiry. I think. Yeah, sure. But fundamentally, it's a book. A side splitter is about being half uh, European and half Asian, half white and half some Malaysian Chinese, and it's about the mixed race experience and things like that. Um, and so some personal stories come into it, but it's, it's fundamentally about that. What uh, what I mean, anybody can write a book. Why did why did you? Why now? Well, it was a uh, lockdown, and that was good, uh, good book writing uh, time uh, because there wasn't much else going on, and I, I'd, had, I'd, I'd been meaning to write a book for a while, but I was too busy, and suddenly I wasn't that busy anymore, Okay. and uh, it w- seemed like a good thing to do, and also, it feels I mean, some like people went and got married or had kids or adopted a dog. Yeah, none of those were options were available to me. <laughs> so uh, I, I went down the book book alley, um, book route. Sorry, and uh, also if the um, I'm getting to a point where people um, might want to read what I say, and also uh, you know the mixed race experience is becoming more and more common. Uh, East Asian people are becoming more and more prominent in western uh, media and culture and so it felt like a timely moment to to write a book like that one of my best buddies uh is half mexican half white yeah, oh, yeah. Dad, dad mexican mom white yeah and uh like i i don't they didn't really mean anything to me i guess until one time when we were in high school in the gym locker room and somebody he was having a disagreement with somebody over a girl, and they called him half breed. Wow, that's old school. Yeah, yeah, that's like something you, they say in Game of Thrones or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half breed. That didn't. That never made it over to anywhere you were living. Is um, it? Is it? Is it some sort of weird insult to have? You know. N- no, no. I I was only ever called one or the other. So when I was growing up in Malaysia, I was called uh, Orang Putih, which just means white m- man. Okay. Um and. I, in the UK, I would be sometimes referred to as that Chinese guy. That Chinese guy. You know, so <laughs> so they would pick one side or the other. That chi- Chinese guy that's not Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, because it was just too confusing for most people. Like you could do both. And um, I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't really have the energy to correct people all the time. Sure. Um, but I know in Japan, um, they're, they're called hafu. Okay. Hafu. Hafu? Hafu are, pe- are like people who are half Japanese, half something else. Oh, that okay. I think is also is a bit derogatory, uh, but I've no, I've not been called half breed at any point. <laughs> no, it's fortunately. <laughs> oh, it's it's makes me cringe. I think a breed bit. having the word breed in there is half is fine. It's the breed bit I think. You're you know, right. That people it probably is. take yes. take issue with. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. Uh, so have you ever thought about how things would be different if? I don't think we've said this yet, so, but I've done, in my research, I know that you, 16 years in Malaysia, right? Oh, yeah. And then moved to the UK. Yeah. And like, r- relatively the same amount of time there then, right? Exactly the same amount exactly of time. Exactly the same so amount of time. Years, yeah. What if those two locations were reversed? Oh, interesting. Have you ever thought about that, where the first t- 16 were in the UK? Yeah, gosh, that is interesting. It would be tough to be a comedian. I mean, the... Yeah, that would require me becoming a comedian um, in 
Malaysia, which yeah. is happening, and I know a few Malaysian comedians who are great and are doing great, and the scene is coming up, but it, it's a few years behind um, the UK and the US, so it would be, yeah, it would be tough getting a, a comedy career going there. I, I think I'm, I'm very happy with the way around I've done it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, if, it, if it was the other way around, I imagine I'd be doing something different. I it wonder what that would be. Um, a mangrove tour guide, or you know, a, a conservationist, or uh, <laughs> a hawker, a hawker of of anything. Oh, like a lot like a hawker stall. You know, the, um, sort of like make make noodles and dishes in the hawker. St- Do you have hawker centers? I guess you call them a food court. Food court. Yes. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. So in East, in in Malaysia, we call them hawker centers, and oh. they're all these hawkers who are just guys in knockoff like Manchester United t-shirts just throwing noodles about in a big walk <laughs> and uh, it's all it's all delicious and all really cheap so maybe that's what I'd do I, I can see that I'd be see the it. one like white looking guy there throwing, <laughs> throwing noodles around do they throw the noodles like the fish in Seattle <laughs> does it look like that oh how do they throw <laughs> the fish in Seattle oh have you never seen that uh, the what is it called Pike's Place or whatever that's this famous I've never seen it in person uh, where it's this fish, fish market and they've done it for years where these guys th- throw these giant you know fish back and forth to each other and catch them and try not oh. to slip them they don't let them land on the floor oh nice yeah. yeah no well i mean they're tossing the noodles in in the walk they're not passing them to each no, other I, I, yeah <laughs> okay yeah yeah because that'd be messy that's like, quite <laughs> that'd be very messy. uh here's here's what i know about making noodles they had a thing on sesame street Mm. Do you remember? Do, do you remember? I mean, if that? there was a street for Asian food, it would be Sesame Street. Of <laughs> yeah, they, there was a old. I mean, thir- thirty years ago, there was a video on Sesame Street, and it was the it was a it was a uh, Asian family, and they were making Chinese noodles. Wow! Yeah, and Sesame then like Street they had like so they had like their fingers like to separate. You know, it was like just dough, and then they put their f- went through a machine oh, to separate y- it. Right. Yeah. So were they just stretching the noodles out? Yeah. Yeah. That's yes. like lamian. It's just like piece hand pulled noodles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sesame, Sesame Street is so great with that. They was like decades ahead, aren't they? Mm-hmm. With like representation and stuff like that, and it's still going strong. Yeah, still going strong. So, uh, at one point on the show last night, you asked about uh, any Malaysian restaurants in the Twin Cities. Yes, and yeah. I've heard, and there was one, one mentioned called Peninsula. Yeah, somewhere I'll have to make a trip. So you, that's something you'll go do. Yeah, for sure. I th- always find it fascinating to. I kind of want to do a travel show where I just visit the most unlikely place of chinese and malaysian restaurants like the most remote places mm-hmm. i go to you know a chinese takeaway in alaska or something, right you know just like as far away f- as you can from a, from where you'd expect these restaurants to be so yeah a, a malaysian restaurant in minnesota would be fascinating yeah so i'd love to drop by yeah and then critique how how good or bad it is i, I how, hey, this is not authentic I'll be so I'll be so mean spirited of me. Uh, but I presume that ma- Malaysian people have traveled all this way. <laughs> like this is terrible. <laughs> you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have dared to dream. <laughs> What's your backup plan? This is awful. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, I'll be looking forward to trying out Peninsula. What? 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 So, like, if I went to a place like that, what? What would I? What would you recommend I order that's authentic? Authentically Malaysian. Well, the, the the dish that's sort of doing well now in the West is starting to come up is laksa, which is like a noodle soup dish. And the soup is sort of a curry-based, kind of coconut milk-based spicy broth mm-hmm. with but usually bits of seafood in it. Depending on which where in Southeast Asia the laksa is from, everywhere has a sort of different variety, variation. But laksa is a fantastic one. Cha Kway Tiao is these dark, flat noodles that are dry. Those are my favorite. My favorite dish in the world is one is called Wu Tan Ho, which is... These flat fried noodles with covered in a gloopy sauce that only ever is translated into English as an egg gravy, which sounds disgusting. And it looks like mucus and vomit. Oh, jeez. But it's no. delicious. <laughs> I've converted every single person I've recommended it to has been like, you know, you know what? That looked awful, but that, that was absolutely delicious. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'll be I'll be. I'd be very impressed if Peninsula has water on hold because that's a deep cut. Okay, yeah. I was going to ask you that. Do you think this stuff will even be available? I reckon they'll have Chao Kway Tiao. They'll have Nasi Lamak, which is like rice with some spicy bits added to it. And they'll have Mi Goreng and they'll have Laksa. Um, anything on top of that is bonus. Okay, okay. I uh, This is reminding me of the beginning of your uh, I watched Philly Philly Wang Wang. Oh, great. Your Thanks ne- for watching. Yeah, Every ne- view counts. 
Yeah, that's right. It's uh, it's playing at home right now as we speak. Yeah, great, yeah. perfect. <laughs> uh, it's been on loop. This is reminding me of something that you say on there about uh, you know the different Asias, the one who eat anything. <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah, uh, yeah. Well, half of Asia uh, plays cricket, and half of Asia Asia eats crickets, <laughs> and that that is basically uh, in the I- Indian subcontinent and East Asia. <laughs> Uh, because it's funny in in the UK when you say Asian, the default is South Asian, and here in the States the, the default is East Asian. Yes. So if you say an Asian person here, people think of a Chinese person, a Korean person, a Japanese person. In the UK, they think Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi. So yeah. I, I just in my special, I just wanted to finally give us a uh, uh, a definite descriptor of the two main types of Asian, and they're cricket Asian and eats weird shit Asian. And I'm a member of eats weird shit Asian yes. as exemplified by egg gravy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. So I was going through your, uh, what an Instagram, I think it was. Mm. And, did uh, you like anything? I didn't. Did I, did I like, or did I like, 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 did you tap uh, on anything? Cause every, every like counts. If I didn't, I'll go back. Great. I, I know I mentally did for sure. Okay. There's you. I have some. So well, the thing I like to do is I bring up like um, there have been guests I've had on here that have like found them. They have ended up on a baseball card or an action figure or you ah. know some you know we, just random like cool objects. They've like uh, they've had baseball cards made of them. Yes. Wow. Yes. Do you not have to be a baseball player for that happen? These these there's a company that does it where they s- have sort of expanded where they do celebrity cards. They mix yeah. it in with the set with all the baseball players, but there's also you know. You know, baseball players, or I mean, uh, duh, baseball, players, like uh, skiers, or uh, okay. uh, they've even done like um, uh, city mayors. I mean, they're just really oh, random, wow. but they've done a lot of uh, celebrities, uh, oh, uh, comedians as well. Oh, cool. Jimmy Pardo, Roy Wood Jr., uh, Ari Shafir, Tom Segura, all these guys oh, neat, have neat, neat. baseball cards. Anyway, you have a connection with a beer. Oh, yes. I just had a beer released in the UK. What the hell? That <laughs> is so cool. You reckon? Yeah, it's um, uh, uh, it's a brewer called Anspach and Hobday, Anspach and Hobday, in London, and we got. I I went over to their brewery one one night. They were launching a new beer, and I got very drunk on this beer, and I drunkenly said to the owner, "You should make a sour beer called the Orwang Tang," and and then I st- somehow got home. I don't remember how I got home. And the next morning, I had a text from him saying, "When are we making the Orwang Tang?" And I said, "What are you talking about?" And it slowly all started to come back to me. And so we made this beer called the Orwangutang, which is a sour beer with a bit of mandarin orange of zest in it. And the proceeds go to an orangutan uh, charity in Borneo, where I'm from. And the can has a drawing of an orangutan with my face on it, yeah. swinging through the jungle. <laughs> 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 Do you, do you have uh do you have a can like at home or do you a the, case or um the, there's a case coming yeah I, I I was here when it just got released while I've been away so I'm looking uh, there'll be a launch event when I get back we're gonna have like a tasting a live tasting and uh, a little show I guess uh, uh but yeah just a really fun little thing to be a part of and the guys at the brewery are really great and yeah and the money's going to some orangutan so yeah everyone's a winner. Will yeah. it be available here? Um, I guess maybe if it does well enough, we could we could try and branch out, for sure. Maybe just at the comedy clubs. Maybe Acme could start stocking it. That would be genius. Yeah, we'll send barrels in. Yes. Yeah. So I uh, I'm a beer drinker, and I use this. Mm-hmm. Um, I go on this app sometimes and enter like I'll rate the beers that I drink and then enter them in. Oh yeah yeah yeah. What's the name of this? It's app? called Untapped. Is the one yeah. I use. There are probably a lot of them. Uh, yeah, sure. I've come across. Uh, but as soon as I found out about this, I looked up. Um, <laughs> or Wangutang oh, to see yeah. if it's on there. Is it on there? It is. Wow. No ratings yet. Yeah. Obviously. I, I don't think anyone's had any yet. It's uh. It's incredible that it's on there already. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, Croydon, England? Is that where they make it? Yes, yes, yes. Croydon? Yes. Croydon, that's right. Yeah. Brewed in collaboration with the Wine Society and comedian Phil Wang. That's right. In support of the Orangutang Foundation, the Orangutang is a lightly tart... So uh, is that how we would describe you as well? Lightly, Lightly tart? Lightly tart. Yeah, yeah. That's my <laughs> disposition. Delicately salty. Also me. Uh, what's G-O-S-E? Gose? Gose? Gose. It's a type of beer, apparently. It's a German type of salty beer. Okay. A goza. Goza. Infused with orange zest and mandarin puree. A- Azaka hops complement the sweet orange and bright citrus notes contributed by orange and mandarin, whilst a delicate acidity keeps the beer bright and fresh. 
balanced by a touch of salt. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, pretty good. Wow. Sounds, sounds good, huh? Yeah. It's good copy. It's good copy for sure. And four uh, percent alcohol. So you that's can, a perfect. You can have. You can drink quite a few of them. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I could drink a couple of fours. Yeah. Yeah, it, look, it, we're not here to get wasted. We're here for the orangutans. Right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We're supporting monkeys. That's yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, they're technically apes. Oh, but, darn uh, it. You're right. But I just look, I, Wow. Is, look the money is going towards education uh, about the difference between monkeys and apes and uh, I'll give you I'll give you my address when we're done here. Send it right to my house. <laughs> Send that information right to my house so I know the, the difference. <laughs> I don't know the difference beyond the apes are big. <laughs> oh, that's that is fantastic, Phil. Um, I recently watched. Uh, well, Gilbert Gottfried passed away, you know, recently, and, yeah, I, like and then right week. after that, I watched. Did you ever watch the documentary about him called Gilbert? No, I, I've seen. I've seen the aristocrats oh sure um but no i I didn't see the documentary about him so in the documentary there's a part uh he's like a well-known cheapskate oh really yeah and in (laughs) in they follow him home in one of the scenes and he is he just is coming back from being out on the road and he has uh something he needs to put away in storage so his wife they go into this bedroom and they start bringing out all these bins that are full of shampoo and soap that he keeps from hotel rooms. Oh wow! I mean, there are thousands. Oh my lord! Thousands, Phil. Gosh, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking there for there, but for the grace of God, go I with something like that because I'm I'm quite cheap and I'm finding very hard to to put throw away a, a freebie. And I I think I so easily could have been like that if I had I gone down a different path early on in life. You know, I can totally understand that uh, that that philosophy. Are you a hoarder at all? Yes. Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You said that with a real melancholy. Well, it's, I yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> 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 but uh a, a and if I traveled as much as, you know, you or Gilbert Gottfried do, I maybe would have gotten into that as well. I maybe have a, a plastic bin full of soaps and shampoos. But you know what hotels have started doing now? They have the big squirty thing that are sort of, they're sort of nailed into the walls of the, of the bathrooms. Yeah, they're on the walls. So you just squidge. So you, you're going to need equipment now Jeez. if you want to collect some free soaps. <laughs> you're coming with a full drill and everything. <laughs> the Sawzall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, when I was a kid, I used to, I thought it was really neat to, when I was at a hotel, I would grab one of those Do Not Disturb and at one point, I must have had two dozen of those things on my door at really? home. Really? Yeah. Just to really keep your parents out? Completely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it doesn't work, but I always <laughs> thought it was really cute. You know, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. All the different ones, all the different ones. So do you uh, do you travel with merch at all? No, I don't have any merch. I feel like I should get some, but I, I'm so lazy, and I don't want to carry the stuff around. And I, and I, I'm quite an anti-clutter person, really, and... Even though I'm always 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 tempted to keep a freebie, I, I try not to have physical things. Mm-hmm. I try and keep physical possessions to a minimum, really. Sure. And so I I, I don't want to clutter other people's lives, and so no, I don't I, I don't have any merch really, unless unless well I guess as the orangutan, that'll be coming out at some point. Yeah, there you go. But but that that doesn't go to me. That goes to that goes to our great ape friends. <laughs> um, I uh I have a suggestion for you. Okay. I I don't know like are there physical copies of your uh special like of the album or anything? Um yes, the, well they 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 they're on LP um yeah, vinyl. There is on vinyl. Oh wow. Made by a 500 pound gorilla. Yeah. They, they make they make a bunch of comedy albums. So and they they've made a, a very beautiful um vinyl of Billy Billy Wang Wang. Oh wow. So very cool. That, yeah. Well, my uh, suggestion was to uh sell copies of your netflix password <laughs> uh-huh. yeah 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 yeah. for for just five dollars you can influence my recommendations and watch your special and watch my special yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and really mess up my algorithm yeah that's funny <laughs> just for 24 hours imagine yeah imagine what the algorithm would look like although how many devices does netflix that you have now like five yeah, i don't know so they i mean they claim uh, uh i n- i know someone close to me wink wink that shares with a family member wink wink right and that family member keeps saying to me they're gonna crack down on us doing this well apparently they are now yeah yeah but um did i say us i meant them i don't know what i'm talking the about wink winks. yeah the yeah. Winkwink family. Yeah. It's a German name, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a German in their blood. 
<laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, let's see. What else did I want to ask you about here before we... Uh, uh, would you ever live in the United States? Um, I think maybe, but only when I'm retired and it would be like in the woods in Oregon, I think. Oh. Yeah. I don't think I'd... No, yeah, that's right. I think if I ever do move to the US, it would be sort of as a huntsman <laughs> when i've get, when i've stopped comedy and i learned to be a huntsman and a, like a trapper i would move to oregon mm. is that a place you've actually been no but I, I, it's <laughs> where i'm going next after here i'm going to portland oregon oh okay and i'm a i'm a big fan of oregon wine um so i've always wanted to visit oregon for that reason and also it looks very beautiful and uh uh oregon's known for wine um, among us afic- aficionados, um, Oregon Pinot Noir <laughs> is very, very good. I see. Yeah. I see. Also legalized, uh, dr- lots of legalized drugs there. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Um, l- um cannabis? Anything, yeah, I think it's even more than that. I think you can buy mushrooms in mushrooms? Oregon, I believe. Bunch of hippies. Bunch of wow. dang hippies, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in New York, and they have, like, marijuana being sold out of food trucks now. There's trucks just with weed, pictures of weed all over them. Yeah. And you just go up to the trucks and you just buy your weed from a like a food truck, and a policeman will walk right by and there's nothing at all. Times Crackers have changed. Really have. Times have changed. And nothing can adapt as quickly to changing times as American business. You know, for a truck to be designed, built, and set up that quickly, it already feels like these trucks have been there for decades. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, they were probably used to like distribute N95 masks two years ago, and then uh, we ran out of those. And right. <laughs> now they just swapped them out with weed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now they're making weed brownies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's crackers. Absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, if I were to move to the U.S., it would be as a sort of like Nick Offerman figure in the woods. Oh yeah, I could see that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'd have to learn a lot of wood stuff but i think i can do that <laughs> it's all on youtube yeah exactly everything's on youtube exactly uh-huh so let's see so the so what's the rest of the year looking like your, your rest of the week here at acme then you mm-hmm. said you're going to oregon then just more more touring yeah yeah i'm oregon i'm going to san francisco spokane washington um there was very nearly a disaster there when we almost routed me around Washington D.C. and then back to the west, and then someone re- and then someone realized, wait, this is Washington State. Oops! Isn't it? It's, uh, I'm sure that's happened a few times. Y- oh yeah, yeah. Uh, San Diego, San Jose, Irvine, and L.A. Uh, and then I'm back to London. Have you spent time in L.A. before? I've never been, never been to the West Coast at all. Never. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, I'm basically, uh, I'm basically a prospector. I'm basically going out west. I'm on the Oregon Trail, right? Yeah. I'm discovering these places. Yeah. Exciting. It's real exciting. Yeah. What, uh, and then when, when you, it wraps up, and then what are you going to do? Back home? More Back shows home. there? Yep. Uh, more shows there. A couple of TV bits to take part in. Uh, working up some scripted shows. Uh, I'm going to, I'm doing Montreal uh, just for laughs at the end of July. And then back to the UK. Uh yeah, there's always stuff. Ju- yeah, there's always stuff just ticking on. Yeah, it's more shows. Uh, I'm doing the Edinburgh Festival, doing a week there. Uh, so what? What kind of show will you do there? D- same as like what you're doing here. Aren't they more like storytelling, like a m- one theme? Yeah, usually. Uh, and I've tried that once, but it's just not my my bag. So okay. I just go, I've, I've gone back to doing my just stand up shows the way I like to do it. Okay. So I'll be some version of this. So this is my current working show, and it's always changing, metastasizing, building, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so it'll be interesting to see what because th- I've had to take out jokes I'm working in the UK that just don't work here. So I'll be able to put those back in and yeah, see how it goes at Edinburgh. And then hopefully at some point becomes uh, the next special. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, real, qu- real quickly, I mentioned at the beginning that you just did the uh, you know late night with Seth Meyers. Yeah. How long did you have? When did you find out you were doing that? Oh, a few months ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, w- uh cuz i had booked in the la uh netflix comedy festival and then uh and then seth myers got in touch and so it looked like we could build a whole visit around it and then we put in the live dates and so my trip here started with the seth myers in new york and then we'll end with the netflix special in la and hit and hitting up places uh between the two yeah yeah did you uh did you glance at any of the comments on the uh you no, no, I never look at comments. Never? No, no. 
Well, I wrote you a really nice note. No, um, <laughs> the, the I only looked at one. It was the very top one. But you know, before you click the little arrow to expand, it oh. was just one. Yeah, and it said. It's so weird seeing seeing Phil perform in the United States. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. clearly one of your fans from over there. From the UK. Yeah. Or just a, a very nationalistic American. <laughs> 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 it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I know I know what they mean. When I see someone I know from the UK on an American show it's like it's sort of it, yeah, it's 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 a bit bizarre cuz it's like someone in a, comp- an a completely alien context and you know the energy of american tv is very different to the energy of british tv so when you juxtapose the two it's like whoa you know, it kind of takes you off guard uh but that's good no but otherwise i don't uh i don't w- i don't read comments of my for myself no um the <laughs> someone asked me once if i if i have a google alert set up for my own name mm-hmm. and i said of course not and they were surprised like why wouldn't you want to know every single thing someone says about you online and like because i wouldn't be here today talking to you <laughs> yeah right yeah <laughs> i'd be in that room obsessing over the last thing someone said about me right yeah yeah uh-huh yeah, pretty much yeah completely completely um you know what i got one final thing that i wanted to tie into your beer thing i went i uh like i said i like drinking beer i went i was at a liquor store about a week ago and the guy behind the counter was, we were talking about, I was buying one of those variety packs. You know, it's like it's oh, a 12 nice. pack of beer. Oh, and like has craft, craft beers? Yeah, craft yeah. beers. And it's, you know, four different varieties from the same company, right? In this oh, yeah. 12 pack. Three times four, 12. Yeah. And uh, and the guy was like, you're really going to like, we get that one in there. It was really popular. We sell a ton of that. You're really going to like that. And I said, oh, and I like this. I already know I like this one. And I said, so when I get home, I go to that one. Or, or, so I'll save those to the end. And the guy goes, you don't drink your favorites first? Right. So what, and right. I'm like, I didn't even, I not even think twice about Yeah, that's strange. That. Yeah, well, you surely you save your favorites to the end because then you know you're ending on a high. Yeah. No matter, yeah. I, I'm, I, it's just peculiar that he is so uh, rigid about how he drinks his craft beers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going back to the store again. No, no I'm kidding. No, they're dead to you. They're dead to you. <laughs> uh, it turns out they were three out of the four were good. Three out of the four varieties least. were good. Okay, now. okay. What was the fourth? It's these milk stout. Oh, milk stout. Uh, right, right, right. Not for you. Mm-hmm. Do you like a stout? Sometimes. I love a stout. You do? Yeah, I love like a, a dark beer. I love a stout. Uh, or a porter or something like that. Yeah. But I don't know. Does a milk stout actually have milk in it? It does say it has dairy so gosh okay it, yeah, it make it does contain dairy so maybe yeah. it's got because you can make alcohol out of lactose so because that's just the, the form of sugar so sure, maybe sure. maybe that's what it is yeah i don't know huh. yeah well, anyway you're, you're getting a lot of comments from brewers under oh man we got we, 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 we better stop we better stop phil this has been fantastic um oh w- and you have a podcast as well that you do do we even oh, mention that yeah yeah i've got a podcast with my friend and comedian phil uh phil i'm phil my friend and comedian uh, pia novelli it's called bud pod it's just a podcast with two buds on it uh yeah just check it out bud pod that's it very good yeah yeah that's it yeah 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 phil yeah. Th- this has been great uh so th- we're gonna you know this will be out while you're still here in Minnesota. So oh, hopefully cool. people will uh, listen to this and want to come see the shows while there's still tickets. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. We're at Acme Comedy Company in the city of Minneapolis in the state of Minnesota. Beautiful Minnesota. Nice, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Thanks, Justin.